Hello everyone, next game is here, it is called Clan Folk. This is a medieval colony simulator game set in 14th century Scotland. You lead your clan, first to survive the environment, then to establish the foothold and finally lead it to prosperity and build the strong legacy. Game somehow reminds me of a movie Braveheart, though this title does not have any violence uh, except hunting and animal slaughter for food, uh, at least at the time of the review. Game is similar to Rimworld, uh, Gnomoria, maybe in some way to Prison Architect or Brick in the Mall. This game tells us a story of a Scottish clan, in other words family, starting from nothing in the highlands of Scotland in year 300. These are the times of wars of Scottish independence, when after the death of Scottish King Alexander III and his granddaughter Margaret, Scottish magnates asked Edward III, King of England, to arbitrate. This led to a period of instability and wars between Scotland and England. But fortunately this game is not concerned, at least at the moment of the review, with politics or warfare, like Crusader King series. It tells us a story of a single family who arrive at some land plot with rich lakes, forests, mountains to start a new life. We don't know what has driven them out of their home, whether this is war, bandits or unjust nobles. Family starts with almost nothing, just with some livestock. They work hard to produce fresh tools, build shelter, learn to use natural resources and produce different products and cloths, cook food, fish and hunt. They fight harsh environment, rainy and hot summers and chilly winters. If they succeed, they will build a beautiful home with workshops, barns, warehouses, trade with other clans, hire workers, provide shelter for travelers. Family will grow and children will appear to change those that will depart this world. A new clan will build the foundations of its legacy. Gameplay First, you generate the map. You select number of lakes, swamps, mountains and other. You start with one or more folks and some livestock. In the beginning, your folks know a little how to survive. You start by gathering stones, branches and berries. By performing these activities, you unlock the initial components, activities and buildings. First, you just try to gather enough food to stay alive. Then build any shelter, not to sleep on the ground, build the first house. Then you start to preparing for winter, when no berries or mushrooms will be available, water will freeze. You expand your houses, workshops, producing better and bigger variety of products that will help you build a sustainable food income, better cloths and things you may trade. When you have solid estate, consistent sources of food, good living rooms, you start to expand your family, marry your folks, later these families bring babies, further expanding the clan. Later in the game, when you have everything you need to sustain ever-growing clan, you just pursue more delicious food, better clothing, more livestock and bigger, better houses. When you unlock the whole idea tree at this moment, at least for me, there was not much driving force or objectives left to continue the game. Interesting fact, Scotland has approximately 500 clans. It is thought first clans formed in the year uh, 1100 and many clans continue to exist today in Scotland and around the world. Game mechanics. Initially I thought it was just another RimWorld clone. I must confess I am absolute fan of the RimWorld, but I was pleasantly surprised to see clan folk mechanics are more close to the original text-based dwarf fortress than RimWorld, and I admire that. They did not just reuse the mechanics, they have built their own style. Though it took time for me to get used to a bit different uh, control design. In this game, most of the time, you do not control forks or livestock directly. You specify what needs to be done. Well, for example, build something, cut grass, cook food and forks based on priorities you configure, perform these activities. By performing these activities, they get better at specific activity, get more experienced and eventually level up that activity, thus they will perform it more quickly in the future. 
As in all Dwarf Fortress Descendant games, at most workstations you specify what number of items to build or what number of items to sustain, that is start building if there is lower number in inventory. This removes lots of micromanagement. There is an insane number of different workstations, building blocks, ingredients and products. It feels like very simple everyday things were broken down to pieces and implemented using unique and detailed mechanics. Very charming. Huge research tree, which is locked and items are hidden under the lock sign. Only uh, the next level items are displayed. I love it, as it holds the intrigue, uh, what will you see and unlock next. Research is not a specific activity as in other games. In this game you perform some work, produce any product or build any construction and you will trigger further ideas and reveal the related items. You interact with other clans by inviting traders to buy or sell materials, tools or food, uh, by inviting and hiring workers and by allowing uh, guests who are passing by to stay during the night and use your services. Temperature and light. You have to heat and provide light uh, in the indoor environment. You raise temperature and provide light by building fireplaces, torches or windows. Uh, as cold and completely dark rooms make your people feel bad and work more slowly. Also, fire sources throw sparks, so anything flammable nearby at some point will catch fire and start burning. Wildlife. Here you see rats, rabbits, cats, foxes. I love to watch mice behavior. Uh, well, they try to hide when they see people. Interesting to see how they want to go to another location, get uh, scared by people, wait and make another attempt. All your folks grow and get older and eventually will die. Also, they may die from other reasons like cold or hunger. You expand your clan by marrying any of the adult clan folk. After some time, you get children. Speaking about families, historically the Scottish clans were just a bigger network of families who were loyal to a specific chief. Word clan is derived from the same Gaelic word meaning children. In this game you have seasons, uh, they strongly impact what you can and cannot do. Sowing is only possible in spring and summer, in winter lake freeze people may spend limited time outside, but still you have to feed uh, and support your people. Learning the game. You have the initial tutorial that guides you through the interface and basic actions. I've mentioned gradual unlocking of all the things and menu items in the game, so learning curve is flat enough, you learn new things gradually. This works well. Tutorial is a bit boring, lots of text to read, but otherwise it's ok. Game difficulty is rather easy right now. Uh, initial challenge is to survive the first winter. When you learn that, well, no other major things happen, you just expand peacefully. In general, Clan Folk is a very serene and relaxing game. Uh, not too much unexpected events or emergencies. Uh, sometimes, most of the time, you are just watching for folks to cope with all the tasks scheduled to proceed with any construction, production, harvesting or any other task. Graphics. I like the style they chose. Graphics looks very beautiful for this type of the game. Detailed trees, grass, all moving in the wind, very nice. Colors change depending on season. Also, you see falling leaves in autumn, blossoms in the spring. Human and animal figures have a distinct, well, funny style. It reminds some children cartoons, uh, but otherwise it blends with the rest of the graphics and has some charm. Interesting, but after a couple of hours of gameplay I got used to that and did not notice that anymore. What is lacking? Some details look unfinished or strange, like windows and doors look a bit weird. I want to point out fire lighting. It's done beautifully, especially lights at night, uh, shine on the ground coming through the windows. Also very nice job on shadows. You see shadows moving depending on the time of the day or the night. Sound. Very nice background music, serene and atmospheric. 
environment sounds depending on place you are looking at uh, also on zoom level sounds of fire uh, are done well fireplace and pit stuff sounds are totally different but clearly heard animal sounds do not feel repetitive or mechanical uh, they sound very real and lively people working have very distinct sound depending on work they perform whether mining for stones digging pit or tracking the straws you hear what is being done weak points I miss some of the mechanics introduced at some point in RimWorld to ease micromanagement, like automatic cattle slaughtering. In this game you perform it manually. Uh, consistency. Not all station products allow you to specify the desired quantity to keep. Well, for example, some pots or buckets do not have this feature. Also, not all stations have a hauling checkbox. So people just uh, what produced they drop it on the ground. At this point, there is no events that challenge the player or require to alter the game style. Now you just give tasks and wait, then give another set of tasks. Nothing seems to hinder your plans. That is comforting, but gets boring after some time. Strong points: cute behavior of rats and babies. I've already mentioned rats. Speaking about babies, uh, they not just roamed randomly. For me it was amusing to watch them play, follow their parents, uh, distract parents from work, see parents playing with children, very lively interactions. Small but very cute touch. Uh, tree of the ideas. If they would uh, have revealed all the items from the time you start the game, it would just overwhelm the player. Now it gradually unlocks all the features and builds the sense of progression. Well chosen and implemented graphics and sounds. Uh, very serene and peaceful gameplay, though until you hit the bottom of the ideas you always have things to do. Uh, even at this early stage I haven't noticed any bugs, very good sign. Just to feel the game, I'm shutting up and leaving you for one minute of actual gameplay. I'm back to speak about the replayability. Uh, I have to admit game hooked me up. It's like Sid Meier's Civilization designed for one more turn. In this game it is tempting to wait for one more day or let's, let's wait for the end of the summer to see how it goes. Uh, for the moment it does not have very strong replayability options apart to try different starting conditions, different world, clan and livestock settings. Otherwise gameplay goes the same path every time you start it. So I would say replayability at the moment of the review is rather weak. Wrapping up. Game has a strong emphasis on production chains and material management, almost no violence, game feels so deep, you almost can feel the spirit of Scottish hardships at the time. I love how developers went this path, not chasing fancy battle or combat features everyone tries to implement. Upcoming feature roadmap promises game will become even better and more fun to play. Absolutely beautiful and unique product. At this point I would give it 8 out of 10 points. I hope you enjoyed this review and I hope it will help you deciding whether Clan Folk is your next game or not. If you like this video, please leave your feedback by pressing the like button. Also subscribe to the channel to get notified about new videos. See you in the next game reviews.